Nityanand guys, welcoming you back with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Sri Nityan the Paramashiva. Um, I had a click actually yesterday and I want to share with you uh, the click that I got. So recently Swamji has been talking about um, the dimension of Hinduism, at least in a few satsangs back he spoke about it. Um, that some dimensions of Hinduism have been digested to a certain extent by uh, something by things outside of Sanatana Hindu Dharma, and actually it has lost authenticity and all that. But there are some things that um, that that cannot be digested other than by somebody who is in Sanatana Hindu Dharma, and that is basically uh, relating to gods and goddesses, um, the pure knowledge to a certain extent got digested. Yoga to a certain extent got digested, uh, and various various other things. So, I was contemplating on that, and um, I was contemplating on why do we relate to um, gods and goddesses, or um, like what is it in that relationship? What is um, what what is it which is um, making the whole process an enlightening process? And I basically got this click. So. Like I shared in many other videos, Swamiji has been sharing for years now with us. Reality is Shuddha Advaitam, pure oneness. Advaita means that uh, the inner space that you cherish, what you cherish inside your inner space very deeply, what you cherish the most inside your inner space, that gets reflected in the manifested reality in various forms, in various ways. <clears throat> so. Bringing, bringing awareness to what we deeply cherish within ourselves and changing that, making conscious decisions, is the way to consciously create your life. And the click I got is, there is the macrocosm and there is the microcosm. When you yearn, when you have intense yearning, when you have a deep prayerful mood, strong devotion, intense seeking, the intensity of your yearning, of your seeking, of your devotion towards the ultimate, which we perceive outside, uh, which we, when we relate outside, means the macrocosm, something in the manifested uh, existence. The intensity of the yearning I have to experience Paramashiva, to experience the space of Paramashivoham, to experience the macrocosm, the universe, as me. With the same intensity, a universe um, gushes into me. So, it's all about the intensity and the sincerity that you have in your seeking, in your devotion. When you strongly want to experience the divine, with the same strength the divine enters you, or that that um, cosmic energy enters you and fills you and raises your frequency. And the more and more you cherish devotion and um, you, know, you build your, ner your nervous system, you, the more and more you cherish that intensity of devotion or seeking, you, you, you strengthen the nervous system to be able to handle more and more energy. So, so actually, keeping the devotion and seeking alive towards Guru, towards Paramashiva, um, is very important so that you continuously intensify and bring more and more authenticity to your, to, to your seeking and devotion and therefore uh, is, uh, you, get, you, become, you become able to um, download or I can say like a, um, canalize or invoke more and more of that cosmic energy within the body. So it's just like, a, what, I, what I realized, it's like it's just a space of pure oneness between microcosm and macrocosm. The intensity with which the microcosm wants to experience the macrocosm, with the same intensity the macrocosm gushes into the microcosm. So it is all about increasing the, the intensity. And how to do that? Just becoming more and more authentic. When you have so many different thoughts unattended, thought currents unattended inside your inner space, you will not be as authentic because so many things are going on and, um, and they will you know, take a load on the int intensity. 
But the more and more you complete things inside of you, the more and more you align each thought current that you cherish towards what you want to create consciously, then you regain that intensity. It's like, um, I was giving this example in other videos, um, it's like you have 100 units available to you, but if you have two units busy in that thought current, seven units busy in this thought current, eight units busy in that thought current, 20 units busy in that thought current, everything is scattered apart. And you can never gather all the 100 units and make them work intensely towards one thing because they're all attending to their own thing. But if you align each thought current, if you discard each thought current which is not necessary and align the 100 units to one thing, then you will be able to you know, increase the intensity tremendously and therefore be able to manifest so much more. So that's the click I got and that, the click, that's basically like, this is why it is important to have uh, Ishta Devata, to have Guru and to constantly cherish devotion and seeking towards the Ishta Devata or the Guru, the God that you relate, you feel connected to. Um, it's basically feeling connection also, right? Um, the more and more you're feeling connection, the more you, the more you have a feeling connection with the macrocosm, the more intense your feeling connection with the macrocosm is, then at the same way, the, with the, the macrocosm reflects that intensity by gushing into you and raising you to its frequency. And like that, we constantly expand and experience various dimensions of who we truly are, because everything that is manifested is uh, part of super consciousness and we are that super consciousness we are uh, in that space of Paramashivoham so um, yeah that's the click I got so uh, really the more and more I'm seeing this and when Swamji is talking about this I can see how um, relating to gods and goddesses is a science which is lost uh, I really feel that I really feel people do it because it's a cultural thing but they do not necessarily understand the science behind it and how it is directly linked to your enlightenment and not only it's directly linked to your enlightenment uh, it's a very important part of the enlightenment because I'm also realizing that Swamiji was sharing right there's two different forms of manifestation there's a man there's the something that is born and unmanifest and something that is unborn uh, sorry it's something that is born and manifested and Swamiji was talking about Nirguna Brahmam means Brahmam the, un the universe or the everything that is manifested um, which is which has no attributes, and Saguna Brahman, which is the Brahman which has all attributes, and uh, we we have to really feel connected to both. Um, I'm starting to realize more and more that some of us, you know, we might feel more connected to uh, to super consciousness or Shiva as um, you know a non-material um, beyond. Uh, beyond something not manifested, the, the, the emptiness or the silence or the darkness or something not manifested. And then some of us might feel more comfortable and more have a stronger feeling connection with like, you know, a manifestation, an idea, a form, um, a way to relate to, for example, puja or something like that. And we are more connected to that. But I'm realizing that you need to be able, the same excitement you should have, the same uh, excitement might not be the right word, the same bliss and space of honest that you have in front of Paramashiva being beyond everything that is manifested. The same honest you should, you should have when you see Paramashiva manifested. So it's not like there's not one that is better than the other. That's again still we are stuck in the dualistic logic. Multidimensional logic I'm realizing that it's more like the same space of honest should be experienced when you think of a Paramashiva when he is unmanifest and Paramashiva when he is manifest and there's no difference and we need to be intense and complete about both only then we kind of you know we have a more complete experience of what it is the space of Paramashiva so that's what I want to share in this video um, in thanking you a lot for watching these videos again inviting you to leave a comment below subscribe like click the bell icon and uh, if you have any questions or any clicks, feel free to share down below. Um, don't forget to check also the first link in the description below. It's the latest song I released. It's a song about Shiva, a devotional Tamil devotional song about Shiva called Patum Nani. Kutum nisayum, kutin murayum, katumen nidam. 
करे सोलवंताओ So it's a very nice song. So inviting you to check the link below. I'm going to make a video soon about the meaning, uh, at least a general rough meaning of the song and how it is clicking with me and how it is expressing the space of Paramashivam that Swamiji is initiating us into. So with this, um, I'm thanking you again and I'm seeing you in the next video. Nityanandam.